<laughs> Welcome everybody to Geek Boots, Military Nerds. Here at Geek Boots, I'd like to tell you all about the big green weenie and how it likes to continue. Fuck us. <laughs> I like being interrupted by Deadpool when you're trying to make a podcast show. He doesn't shut up, does he? No, he doesn't. It <laughs> seems like it goes off every maybe <clears throat> five to ten seconds. So yeah, he could classify as a as a co-host. He served he in special forces, so good. you know he's just gonna move around back there while we talk about and talk over the top of us. Well, I attempted to shut the case, and I can I can still hear him loud as. Loud and clear. So that's fun. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. this week's episode, we are going to talk about. Um, that's going to get really distracting, and the listeners are going to hate us. I guarantee it. I'm going to turn yeah, it off real fast. Off. Yeah. <laughs> turn that thing off. Don't ask you, Justine. Is the meaning of life? Good question. Nothing? You're not going to... Boring! I think the person who kills the most henchmen wins. Sorry. Hench people. And on that note, he's off. (laughs) Well. Interesting. And we're back. This week's episode... Is all about Halloween um, because when this episode drops, it'll be October, well, October 2nd, but it's the first weekend of October. Um, and I'm sure that everybody's going to want to just get ramped up to do the Halloween countdown, if you will. Um, yes. So this week's episode, we are going to dive into movies that we've watched for Halloween marathons why we enjoy them, maybe some fun facts about the films. Um, And then stick around for the end of this episode. And we're going to talk about the Hawkeye trailer because it would be fitting to, to, you know, obviously not wait for Halloween to end and talk about something that comes up in Christmas. Yeah, perfect. Right. Why not? Uh, (laughs) Before we get started, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, comment on this episode and tell us something that you enjoy during Halloween, movie-wise, TV-wise, doesn't matter. Um, Make sure you check out local comic book shops. Mine is Mill Geeks Comics and Collectibles. Make sure you support local comic book dealers. Ever since COVID was a thing, they have been struggling. Uh, What about you? Any shout-outs, Hawkeye? Sure. Graham Cracker um comic book shop here in Marietta. Nice. Great, great, great place. They got amazing stuff. Nice. And I thought Deadpool right. was annoying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Sorry, got a phone call. Right. Um, that being said, let's dive into this. Uh, so uh, there's always this marathon and sometimes it gets difficult to when everything's flushed in your face, it's difficult to fi- pick out what you want because all the information is already there. I, I, we touched base on this last season during last year about how it got difficult to find a movie to watch as a whole. So this episode is going to help the listeners, help, help our listeners maybe have an idea of what to watch this weekend. Um, I'm going to throw, I'm going to throw it over to you, uh, brother. Uh, what is a, a, a Halloween movie that you a really enjoy or try to start the October feelings up? Well, I have a, a classic, I think it's classic, but a uh, movie that I love. It's the original Fright Night. Oh, yeah. From 1985. Absolutely love that one. It had uh, Vincent Price. And uh, I just love that movie. Probably one of my favorite scary movies that I've ever watched. I just think it was well done. Um, Roddy McDowell was fantastic in it. I just thought it was a great movie. So that that's my go-to. I don't um, I didn't like the remake, but I like the, the original. Yeah, I love the original too. I mean, the score slash soundtrack. Uh, 
mm-hmm. the practical effects because it was the 80s of course yeah um i really enjoyed the performances um and it was such especially during its time i mean even now since it doesn't get made a whole lot it was such an original storyline i think that's what drew me in so much yep. your next door neighbor is not just a serial killer he's a vampire, he's a vampire. <laughs> yeah um and to just have one of those age-old tales but from a new plot line of the kids see something the parents don't understand nor want to acknowledge it so they're going to make you believe him yeah so they're (laughs) just gonna you know brush off everything you throw at them and just say yeah whatever yeah whatever you don't know what the hell you're making it up exactly um until you know you're flushed with the actual truth (laughs) oh holy shit yeah Yeah. um i think that in terms of the remake i think colin farrell uh was the perfect choice for that film everything else was a little meh because they were trying to make it more in terms with the times but colin farrell definitely has that same attitude as his predecessor in the original but yeah there's there's a lot with the original that um it just i mean it's 80s horror movie you can't yeah it was it was where, really well done it, you know that it really has stood the test of time i think yo yeah i mean it's still good most most 80s horror movies it's like one of those things where it's like no don't remake it yeah. <laughs> halloween you know yeah. uh, you know you can go on and on with all the nightmare on <laughs> Elm street, street you know God. so those are some good ones. <clears throat> as, as we tie into fun facts about our movies, um, fun fact about uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, the sequel originally did not star Robert England. They filmed quite a number of scenes with him, but they it didn't look uh, the same as they had in the first in the first one. So they managed to bring him back. Um, conversations were had as to why this looks off and what he did before they you know had him perform and his response to looking at some of the footage that they had recorded of the new guy was simply well the original glove that you guys had me rock was actually heavy so the actual reason why freddy krueger slouches is because that clawed hand is rather really heavy and he had it he was leaning through the movie so you know and he he remember the fact that he was able to remember all these little nuances helped make uh nightmare on elm street 2 better not only because they brought him back but it's like you realize that this character that you didn't think was going to be that important to the storyline ends up being way more astronomically important to all these little Absolutely. details um that being said fun fact about your film uh do you have any fun facts about uh fright night not really any fun facts um i know that the it was written and directed by the same person so i thought that was kind of interesting that he actually wrote it and directed it so um i mean it was an original story obviously then right because he wrote yeah. it and then directed it so but i don't really know any any uh, fun facts i mean i just uh i think having vincent price in it was amazing <laughs> right i mean he's such a classic actor and to, to have him in it just really kind of made that movie for me. Yeah. So I don't really don't know any fun facts on it. Yeah. I mean, you know, Vincent Price during the 80s, if you want to succeed, you just put Vincent Price somewhere in your movie and you're good to go. <laughs> Use course. his voice in your music video. <laughs> yeah. Of course, you know, Vincent's going to make sure he reads the script and goes, I don't know. Um, well, in an unorganized fashion we'll throw it over to uh my movie choice which is more of a franchise than anything else but as i'm wearing the shirt the evil dead franchise most notably evil dead 2 um which is again also funny in terms of comments about remaking classic horror movies because evil dead 2 is the result of realizing that evil dead 1 was so horrible that they remade it but put a two on it so it looked like a sequel um uh there's 
fun facts about that in terms of the legality of the name because the company that let them film and blah 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 and paid them and whatever was like oh, no we don't want you to remake it so in order to kind of get around the red tape if you will they titled it evil dead 2 <laughs> that was the big reason why they did it and when they remade it they did horror comedy uh and because the reason why it was labeled so bad was because it was so laughable um evil dead one and fun fact about that movie one of the fun facts that i love the most about that movie was again it's an 80s movie so a lot of practical effects go right. into the making of this movie and when they did the hand crawling along the floorboard in order to make that work what they did was they obviously attached the prosthetic to come up here so that the wrist looked like this a little bit and then they just detached one of the floorboards used the basement and he just walked across the set doing this so it made it look like the hand was crawling along the floor um but That's uh, right uh there there were so many little tick uh tricks and things that they did during these movies to make these movies work as a whole um that kind of set it in a different caliber as most horror movies in its time period i mean it was the first horror movie of its time to do stop stop motion photography for certain scenes like the scene where ash gets sent flying through the forest that was mm -hmm. stop motion um so the so many things that they had done in order to film that movie was just genius. Like it's the kind of genius that says we don't have a budget to do extraordinary things. So we need to get creative. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I love this movie, but I mean, more than anything, I love evil dead Two and army of darkness so much. And of course the, the TV series on stars, uh, that is now on Netflix, uh, Ash versus Evil Dead, is this this guy should 100% not be your hero. He's, he should not be your savior. He just gets caught up in the middle of things. And he's just like, so in order to live my life normally, I have to kill all these deadites? <laughs> <sighs> all right, here all we right. go again. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, if, you know, it just so much cheese. You know, you got a guy who cuts off his hand because his hand's getting possessed and then attaches a chainsaw to it. Right. <laughs> like, Makes sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, <laughs> it's funny because the setting of this is supposed to be more of a late seventies. So of course, even though in the eighties, he's saying things like groovy, you know, like he's, he's got all these little one liners and one little bits. Um, you know, um, the, 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 the demonic mom is trying to get out of the cellar and he stomps on top of the head what, shouting, I'll swallow your soul, I'll swallow your soul, points the shotgun, the, the rifle at her head and goes, swallow this, <laughs> boom, blows her to kingdom come. Yeah, there's a lot of cheesy lines in that. There's thing. <laughs> so much cheesy one-liners, but you couldn't <laughs> help but just appreciate and admire it for that cheese factor um so yeah my my i would say that my first go-to pick has to be that movie i grew up i can't you know maybe it explains some things but when i was a kid my it dad took really me, does yeah my dad took <laughs> me to see army of darkness so it's like this explains really? some things about me Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> um let's that's see. awesome uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. You know, a non-scary movie that I like is Hocus Pocus. Right. That's like that's like kind of a guilty pleasure. I yeah. Enjoy that. Seriously, I mean, how we've only been ten minutes into recording and we're almost already completely done with our conversations. <laughs> so I might as well start bringing all the things up that we want to do. I mean, um, this is why I really appreciate. Uh, right now, we've got Paramount Plus, but the original reason for it was to watch NFL games. Um, yeah, apparently because Paramount Plus, uh, you can stream certain games if 
Hmm. You know, it calls for it. But they've got so many classic horror movies that I don't think they have a horror, too many horror movies that pass the date 1999. Like, I think you're right. They're so classic. And I feel like as much as I respect them, I'm not Rob Zombie. I can't just pick these movies up. And the reason why I quote that is because uh, they were doing Horror Fest in like 2018 or 2019 when they were advertising for um, the House of a Thousand Corpses uh, third sequel um, to it all. It was Sid's last movie, basically. Um, And they had asked him a question during this Horror Fest about his favorite horror movies. And he said, honestly my go-to will always be the classics like boris koloff Mm -hmm. like and i probably butchered the butchered the hell out of that name and i apologize but but it's all right yeah but like those movies like old frankenstein the mummy Mm -hmm. dracula so many of these classic movies those are his go-to and they have always been um his inspiration to do some films the way he does it um so a lot of those movies are on Paramount Plus because it's Paramount, so of course right. that makes sense. Yep. I, I do not have it in me like Rob Zombie to pick up some of these movies because when I, per, me personally, when I'm thinking Halloween, I'm thinking I want to I want to scream, I want some scares, and uh, these movies... That's why not, you watch Focus Focus. Yeah, you know, yeah. But... <laughs> <laughs> but i can't do that with a lot of those right. old movies but sure. hocus pocus man oh my god that movie you know not scary no but classic but classic yeah fun, fun fact. Fun. yeah fun fact because that movie is in the borderline region before cgi started taking over um the scene where he takes the knife and cuts open his mouth they uh the moths and the the dust was put into prosthetic pockets in his gums so that when he cuts the mouthpiece open he can activate it open it up and then the moths would come out (laughs) it only worked on the second take the first take the moths basically fluttered out and just dropped down to the floor and they're like well we can't use that one he goes great i get to put this all back in my mouth again <laughs> like that sucks lovely um yeah hocus pocus is a good one uh speaking of uh those cute cheesy ones halloween town from disneyland from disney plus uh not disney plus but the disney yeah. channel yep oh man yeah i know that movie was so good family uh, family movies are fun too yeah oh yeah 100 yeah. percent. there's mm-hmm. Because they they got that uh, Halloween flavor to it, no matter what you've got, right. whether it's the the lighting and the color scheme, the storyline, the characters, just you know, you add yeah. a couple of skeletons and you're good to go. <laughs> yep, I love this time of year. Halloween is my favorite holiday, and uh, my house is already all decorated for Halloween, um, so I'm I'm ready, man. I I love. It. We always have a big Halloween party, which we're going to have again this year, and. Uh, so it's just uh just love it man just love the feeling the feeling in the air the cool fall days the movies the shows everything i just can't get enough the hundred degree weather here in washington has definitely made me go (laughs) oh my god i am so excited for fall and halloween now (laughs) i you know i like halloween a lot but my favorite holiday will always be christmas so it's like halloween follow follows right behind it but this year I am so excited and ramped up for Halloween. I've got so many different ideas for things. And then um, not to talk about it too much, but of course, one of the companies I shop with so much, Black Rifle Coffee, I do videos for them on the side for the fan. As a fan, they're doing headless horseman roast. And as a response to pumpkin spice latte, Hmm. that's the reason why I buy him. This is the most expensive prop I've ever had for any of my YouTube channel. I'm just saying, like, what am I doing? But it's okay because, like, I could cut, I could, like, remove my head if I tilt my head back to get the beard out of the way. Just remove my head and start taking photos with him. Perfect. And then when I start learning the video editing, I can just have him move around and him do the lines. So I just remove my head. There you go. (laughs) Exactly. That's a cool prop, man. I, I like it. Annoying, but awesome. (laughs) <laughs> he has a party mode 
So d- throughout the entire night while you're having a party with friends, he just constantly tells your friends that he is trapped and he needs help. He is being kidnapped. Uh, please help me. That's the things he says. And then uh, I posted it on my TikTok. The first thing he did on the news report, uh, deranged kidnapper still has head of Deadpool or something like that. And I'm just like, did he just call me a deranged kidnapper? Wait, hold on. <laughs> I think he did. Right? Bastard. <laughs> I'm sure if he That's was on cool. right now, he would swear at us, but it's fine. Probably. Right. So does he does he react to things you say to him? No, that Am was right? no, okay. that was the in, interesting bit when I was doing this video um introducing him as a new prop and character to all my things that i do especially for halloween i was using the necronomicon from evil dead um the special edition of evil dead 2 comes in a miniature uh, necronomicon and um the eye and if the batteries are um fully charged when you press it you hear a scream come out and then you you've got multiple famous iconic pages uh, that they reveal and show through the movies. Um, And I, I think they revised it because army of darkness did this incredible page flip bit through the whole book. So they added to it. Anyway, um, I had him reading from it. The whole point of it was that he's using this to summon a demon, to get him a body. Um, (laughs) Right. And so I was like, okay, I'll just have him say a random line and I'll key into one of the famous quotes by Domino, which is um, talking to Deadpool is like talking to a guy being attacked by bees. None of it makes sense. He, his line ends up actually working with what I said, because my line is, whoa, we don't need to be summoning some demon headless horseman guy to come and get you your body back, my guy. And then his line is, ha you think just because i don't have a body i can't kick your ass and then he goes <laughs> blah, 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 blah. and i go whoa that actually worked because my next scripted line was to say the bees line and i go huh what the hell am i supposed to say now it actually worked but um no it, he's just it's so random and like we said before we started uh recording or i think while we were recording earlier um his lines when he's not on the app is so random it's hard to know i feel like i really got to give him a lot of attention just to hear what he cycles through but on the app i went through all the jokes he's got 20 different jokes uh, about five different threats things like that it's really more calculated on the app you can script it how you want him to speak then and get through the app technically yeah technically yeah if i wanted to i um I mean, none of it would make sense, but yeah, I could, I could totally do it. All I'd have to do is sit there and film through each joke um, at the angle I want and then go in and edit which joke and which line I want to add to the film. So it's a lot of work though. Yeah. I can imagine imagine a lot of work, but it's worth it. Cool. Yeah. The facial expressions, everything moves. Head tilts. it's, It's cool. Yeah, his mouth moves like I literally when I was first running my fingers over the mask, I could feel the lips of of the Deadpool. I'm like, I don't want to know about that. Oh, interesting. I don't want want to know about when you run your hands over his mouth. I listen. Listen, man. You know, it's been a dry spell. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, whatever, man. Listen. Yeah, you know, I mean, we'd we'd all fuck Ryan Reynolds. Come on, let's be real. (laughs) Probably. Just imagine it's Ryan Reynolds and you're good to go. Um. (laughs) We digress. I digress. Yeah, we digress. Uh, We went from talking about our favorite horror movies to giving our listeners something horrifying to listen to just now. So absolutely. Keeping it in the theme. (laughs) Um. So Fright Night, Evil Dead, uh, you got, are there anything, is there anything else you're getting hyped about for this Halloween aside from movies, maybe a television show just to fill up the time? You know, I, here. Yeah, I wish I could, I wish I could, you know, I just, uh, I'm more of a, 
party, you know, mm. decorate. I don't really sit and watch a lot of stuff. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know. I like uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. Sure, right? that counts. I mean, yeah. I love that movie too much, probably. Um, you know, that's always a, one I have to watch every Halloween or Christmas, <laughs> which, you know, it works. But, uh, you know, I was just at Disneyland too and got to go. They, you know, they changed the, the Haunted Mansion every year to that, to the Nightmare Before Christmas. So that's, that's always a, a good time. So, right. That's probably, that's probably my one of the ones I have to watch for sure every, every Halloween. I, f- I feel it. I feel it. I think there's, I think this year is going to be movies I just haven't watched in a while. Like I said before in another episode, I have to watch Sleepy Hollow now because there's so many mm. like things going on with Headless Horseman. And I'm just like, when was the last time I watched <laughs> I can't even tell you the last time I watched that. Yeah. I think right. I only watched it once too. I don't think it was one of those ones where I, I felt like I needed to watch it more than once. So you said you haven't watched many series. I would do a recommendation. And okay. it's uh, definitely something that uh, to our listeners as well, if you haven't, it's on Netflix. They're long episodes, but they're really worth it. A lot of, a lot of build up. Uh, and then the last couple episodes are honestly the scariest episodes they've had. It's called The Haunting of Hill House. Oh, yes. Wow, that's good. <laughs> I haven't watched it, but uh, I've heard good things about it. Right. Um, they did the same group of people did. Well, not the same group of people necessarily different actors, but the same um, crew Actually, and yeah. directors mm-hmm. and whatnot. They did haunting a blind manor and mm-hmm. blind manor's all right. Um, it's not as good from what I hear. No. Yeah. Hill Hill house was definitely superior on so many levels i'm also trying to make sure i got the right house yes it was hill house yeah um that and of course i mean we're veterans we got to talk about zombies the walking dead oh yeah i love that show (laughs) i um haven't watched it in a hot minute i need to get back into it might might do that um want to get off work you know i got some time to myself but the walking dead is always a fun show to get into uh i think the earlier seasons especially because it was it's a lot more zombie based yeah and then they get into the more of the human element but the walking dead for sure yeah um most people probably watched that one already though because that's kind of a that's a good go-to right don't consider that really a halloween show but i definitely definitely love it yeah um supernatural the first couple of seasons of supernatural Never watched it what Never. <laughs> record scratch <laughs> what? What? <laughs> yeah never not even not even one episode i've ever watched that one. Oh man you recommend that... it yo god yeah so don't it's... they jump the shark though in the latter seasons like it's what i will say is this is the show is very it, it it's, it's constantly i'm i know i'm uh, words are hard it's very episodic but every episode has some element some conversation between the brothers about what's overall going on with the big bad that season it just mm-hmm. it is what it is but every episode is episodic um season five was definitely their best season that they ever did however the finale is the best episode they've ever done because the finale was Jensen and Jared's baby in terms of directing and being a part of this episode to make sure that you really get a good ending to such a show. I mean, 15 seasons, come on, man. Yeah. Like, damn. Last five terrible though. I mean, or not as good, I should say. It, it struggled to find its footing and figure out its life if you will uh six seven and eight but then they do some real gasping episodes and seasons when they um go into like season nine and ten because they did some stuff that just even i had to go i'm sorry what the fuck did i just see holy shit i need to see more wait no this isn't a streaming service i have to wait to the next year in order to watch the show <laughs> son of a bitch so yeah it's i would say that 
it's worth i think you need to try and quote unquote push through the the seasons so that you understand once you get back into uh the later the really like later seasons um but no i i th- i've I've enjoyed the show from start to finish. I know it was very popular. Oh God. It's so popular. It's so popular yeah. that I don't, what I don't understand is that Wilson's leather company had an opportunity. And I think it still does given the love that it, the show still has with its following and its fan base. Um, they discontinued the jacket that Dean Winchester is known for in the first five seasons of the show. So after the fifth season, it was kind of like a, they were like, well, we don't want to continue selling this jacket because the show's going to be over. No one's going to care about this. That was kind of the general thought process and rumor mill. Hmm. They should have kept selling the jacket, but it is what it is. I managed to find a guy on eBay based out in London who had bought a stockpile of these jackets and was selling them. And I bought myself one and I own that jacket. It's got Ooh. Wilson's Leather Company brand stitched on the back, so you know it's authentic. Uh, it is one of my most prized possessions. <laughs> I kind of want to just put it in a glass case itself. So <laughs> just never let the elements Don't touch it. it. <laughs> yeah, where? Oh, I, I yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I, I was stationed in Fort Bragg, North Carolina, oh. and that's when I you had sure? it. I know it's... It's there's a reason why they say it's the killer of careers because it definitely killed my desire to stay the full 20. <laughs> I was like, nah, I'm good, fam. I don't need to be here any longer. <laughs> For Bragg, North Carolina, a horror fest in and of itself. Yes. Um, you've got your you got your women who are scandalous, who get STDs and die, just like a horror movie. Uh, people are dying by horrible means uh both fun that's both ha 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 oh sad um so yeah the fort bragg is a horror movie in and of itself someone should make a horror movie based on some of the bases out there in america and the world um if they haven't already and fort bragg should be the the first one i think in my honest opinion (laughs) yeah no that was kind of my first time cosplaying because i tried to dress up as close to dean winchester as i could possible when oh, really? i was going through a divorce and decided uh i could do what i want now because she Ooh. did not like uh me wearing that stuff she thought it did not look good and she therefore did not want to be seen with me wearing it i see i can say all this now because my divorce is finalized and i no longer care uh <laughs> um so yeah, I I, I would rem- I remember going to like the PX and stuff, wearing this jacket in North Carolina heat, going, why am I doing this to myself? But at least I look good, <laughs> right? And then Pretty you funny. know get to Washington, rainy weather, and I'm like, I can't bring this out into the rain because I don't want to damage it. I there's no winning here. There's just no winning. Yeah, here. I know. No, but. Uh, yeah, Supernatural. That's a show I recommend being watched during the Halloween time. I mean, they even have Halloween special episodes too that are really fun. And they they dive into some pretty cool Halloween style lore. They got a one about a scarecrow as a pagan god. It's really cool stuff. So yeah, definitely recommend Supernatural. All right. Well, I'm gonna have to watch it now. I know. Yeah, you're you're gonna come back and you're gonna say. I'm sorry, two brothers broke into my my home and I haven't been able to put it da- down since. Or no, 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 what was the saying? Two brothers broke into my home saying that their father hasn't been home in a few days and now I'm stuck and they won't leave. It's something like that. That's the, the general quote because that's kind of how the whole show starts. So it's fucking awesome. And Jensen Ackles is a dream boat. <laughs> if I can't, yep if if you can't get ryan reynolds it's okay because there's there's jensen ackles he's the follow-up ryan reynolds he, jensen ackles hugh jackman that's that's how i he's in the next it. season of the voice he is oh my god <laughs> <laughs> you know that brings Whatever. up an un- interesting thing if if you want to look at a horror movie that's superhero related 
Um, Brightburn. Okay. Brightburn. So essentially picture, if you will, Superman uh, comes down to earth and instead of being the hope we all hope he we all want him to be he lets the bullying affect him and he decides to retaliate oh okay yeah and when he comes a new one his, huh i don't think i've heard of that when is that a new movie eh, relatively it came out in 2019 i think okay. 2018 2019 um yeah i absolutely love that movie and it's really? you know i think the one of my favorite things about brightburn is the reality of how scary the aesthetic is of a dark area dark country like area and there's these two glowing red eyes and they're glowing because he's got fucking laser heat vision <laughs> and you're just like yes he does fuck so yeah, Brightburn. Definitely recommend Brightburn uh, to you and our listeners. Check that one out. I'm. I feel like we're just rambling on in order to we fill are. up the time at this point. We kind of are rambling, <laughs> yeah, right? Us, so we don't have, we don't have <laughs> another person to help us out with this right? time or, filling stuff. But uh, on top of that, we were just straight to the point when it came down to the scripting. So, yeah. <laughs> so all of a sudden, true. boom. Yeah. It's true. Jen would normally just alone talk about all of her movies for about a half hour. We love you, Jen. Miss you. <laughs> we do. We do. You know, we talked about it at the beginning, and I know mm. it's not a good segue. Okay. But being a Hawkeye cosplayer. Oh, yeah. We, we ended up missing the episode that week we were going to talk about it. So I think if, if you don't mind, we no. should talk about the trailer. This, this is kind of ominous. It's You know, there's a meme where uh, they did... They they um, label the Darth Vader behind Luke Skywalker. Uh, Luke Skywalker wants to listen to Christmas music and Darth Vader's Halloween. And he goes, "Not on my watch" or something like that. They re-edited it to have it be Darth Vader and Mariah Cara Carey is standing <laughs> behind him, getting ready to blast her song for That's Christmas funny. time. That's that- funny. That being said, ladies and gentlemen, I know you're about to be ultra scared because we're now about to talk about all things Christmas and how accurate it is to love to love Christmas even during Halloween times. Why, why don't you go ahead and take us away with your thoughts on the Hawkeye Show trailer on Disney Plus? Well, I think you know, obviously, cosplaying the character, I was really anxious to see a trailer. Right? We'd seen. Right some some behind the scenes shots some leaked shots things of that we really didn't understand what the premise of the show was going to be mm-hmm. obviously we didn't know it was going to be a christmas show until we saw the trailer i mean nobody saw that coming um you know then we see the end of black widow we see that situation right with yelena so we just don't you know we're like what what is this going to be about so when the trailer dropped you know i'm like as soon as i found out it was out man i had to go see what was going on and mm. I have to say I was pleasantly surprised. I, I like that it's going to be a Christmas show. I think it's super cool. You know, kind of that diehard home alone, you know, fun. This looks fun, right? It looks like it's going to be action packed and fun to me. Right. That's, that was my takeaway. Yeah. He it's, it's I love that you said diehard because there's a line in the trailer and I'm, I'm hoping that they honor it and put it in the show. But Hawkeye had a line somewhere in there about how he's just, he's still trying to celebrate Christmas. And it felt like the diehard line about, you know, come out to LA, have a good time, we'll have a good yeah. laugh, have a good drinks, you know, that line. And yeah. they did it in this, and that's kind of his way of doing it. I absolutely love that. Yeah. Yes. Him. Yeah, but it looks, it looks like their, their, um, their dynamic, you know, their chemistry. Mm-hmm. Looks like it's going to be good. You know, that's another thing you wonder how are those two going to interact with each other on the screen. And uh, I think, at least from what we've seen in the trailer, I think it looks like they've they've done a good job with this, right? Right. And uh, I, I'm excited for something that's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of energy, a lot of go go go. Because you know the other series really haven't been that so much. Yeah. And um, so th- this could be a lot of fun, and and uh, so I was I was definitely happy and, and yeah. shocked and shocked that it was going to be Christmas. I think that's that's they were filming it you know months ago yeah and and i love that 
um, they really put to bed so many rumors too, because uh, what's her name is playing like this, you know, new Hawkeye, if you will. And Mm -hmm. so many rumors when they first saw the set, not only the set photos, but when they saw that she had been confirmed casted into this show with Hawkeye, um, a lot of people thought, oh, that's his daughter coming up and taking the mantle. That'll be oh, interesting. No. And it's like, nope, throw that right out the window. It's a Anybody person who... who's trying to be like Hawkeye. <laughs> yeah, well, if you, I mean, if you know the comics, you, everybody, you know, you know that that's not the case. It's not his daughter. Even though he calls her Hawkeye in the, in the, in the movies, you know, she's, yeah, Kate Bishop is definitely no relation to him. Oh, okay. Uh, so I did not yeah. know that about the comic books. So yeah, yeah, no relation. In fact, in the comics, he doesn't have a family. He's not married. He doesn't have a family. He's he's kind of a nut job, is what he is, and he he uh, plays the field quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Kind of a guy, you know that, that kind of a, a character. So yeah, not uh, not married, no, not kids. So I know a lot of people were upset about that with the MCU. They took they took him that direction, that character that direction. In fact, I think even he was upset about it. Because you know, after the Avengers, you could see there were kind of this chemistry between him and Black Widow, and then all of a sudden now he has a family mm-hmm. and a wife and kids. So I think there was, I mean, I think some people love that aspect of the character, but he's more this the everyday guy with the kids and family and everything. A lot of people that are real comic book fans were like, oh man, no, that's not that's not Hawkeye, man. That's not that's not what it, he's all about. And now that we've seen Endgame, I, I can almost argue that I'm kind of glad they went that angle because end game is the culmination and reality of all these characters having to finally deal emotionally with everything that they've endured all of these other films right um you and know having his family all disappear right gave him that motivation to exactly do what he did in end game yeah exactly you know i mean Thor's going to have his response so you know all these people are going to have their responses to everything going on so of course, in my opinion, yeah, I think Hawkeye needed to have something for him to lose as well because everybody else did too. I mean, yeah, Steve Rogers is trying to move on, but he's quote unquote struggling to do so by creating a platform which people can come together and talk. But deep down, he's as miserable as the rest of them. Um, yeah. and Black Widow's doing the exact same thing. She's trying to run the Avengers now because she thinks that's the right thing to do because she's afraid to process, but she's still processing. Yeah, it's. I think that was the right direction for MCU wise for Hawkeye. <clears throat> but, you know, again, thanks to Loki, I mean, everything's canon now. Yep. <laughs> so yep. <laughs> we're all variants. Yep. And, uh, so. you know, that's an interesting segue if you're looking for something in the horror element that you don't want to get too spooked but something halloween vibes zombies qualifies in that category and what if zombies was actually really well done um it's def it doesn't have the spook factor but it definitely has the doom and gloom that you need out of a lot of a zombie genre film um or you know feature if you will uh because the way they did it um i won't was a little disappointed you were for zombies yeah i mean i liked it but they like do you you see the the what if poster and it's got hawkeye Mm -hmm. and then i don't want to get a spoiler but he's in it for what a nanosecond yeah well you know you only got 30 minutes to (laughs) to put everything together Uh, it's just it's kind of wild because it, it also bears a lot of questions and you got to think about the timeline and how everything is being put together too, because people, some people watched it and they go, Oh, wow, they're really screwed. And I'm like, yes and no, because if you look at the timeline of infinity war and how all of infinity war played out, there's other characters that are unanswered for that will come into play. Yeah, so, I don't think we'll see any more of that again, though. I mean, once no, it's over, yeah. Don't get me wrong; I would love that, though. Yeah, <laughs> like, but um, no. I hear today's episode's good. I haven't watched it yet, though. I, I'm gonna be real with you. I I I see some of the titles, and I'm just like, meh. Yeah. I think this is my moment where I'm I'm I'll be excited when Hawkeye comes out. Don't get me wrong, but 
given the fact that what if is the show that is happening right now this is my official break from marvel that i quote unquote wanted last year and we'll see the internals i will see the internals i will but right now i'm taking a a a little bit of a step back if you will because marvel was had rumored and talked about not doing anything all of 2020 taking a break and then diving into it and then you know went back on that completely i don't know why i was very happy that they were taking a break so that i can digest everything i just got done watching all the way up to end game and i just you know you got to be careful when it comes down to this kind of stuff because you don't want to burn people out on the things that you're making however flip side of that you also don't want to take such a break that when you come back into it people are like like halo or or something where they're like no you you were good back in halo 3 why you keep making more you stop trying to revive this this needs to die already yeah so it's yeah, a I've got a, bitch. I've got a DC show I'll, I'll pitch real quick. Okay. Doom Patrol. I've heard good things about that one. I really want to watch it because of Brendan Fraser. It we wa- you know, I watched it thinking, oh, let's see what this is all about. And then I was hooked. Like I got hooked. It's it's the nuttiest show I think I've ever watched. And you think it can't get any weirder. And then they the next episode is weirder. Like they just some weird stuff, man. And it's but it's so well done. I just really am enjoying it. So that's a good one. If you if you haven't watched Doom Patrol, check it out. Give it a try. Check out Doom Patrol. Got it. Uh yeah. where Not is Halloween, it? But HBO Max, right? Because HBO they've Max, got yeah. Warner Brothers stuff. Yeah. So mm-hmm. good thing I turned that back on. <laughs> yeah. Let me know what you think. It's it's uh if you watch it, because it's it's a, it's a fun ride. There's so many things to do for Halloween. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Doom Patrol's not Halloween, but it's definitely good. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I mean, you know, sure. I mean, you got a robotic man. It can be somewhat elemental, if you will. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, I think we'll cap this episode off. Halloween sure. is coming up. Super Can't excited. Wait. Yes. Tune in next week. We will bring up another series of movies that we can think of to talk about. Um, Help give our listeners some ideas of what they could tune into. Um, I'm very excited because I got this new gorgeous gothic chair that I'm be sitting in now. I know. Look like a king. Thank you. I feel like a king. And I'm just going to do a random plug. Uh, So if you're still listening, Please listen in further. Um, Live Bearded, if it's still by the time this episode airs, has it out and available. They call they have a new label out called Black and Gold. Uh, they wanted to key into some of the old time factors of liquid gold or oud, if you will, for scents and fragrances. So makes you feel like a king, as you just got done mentioning. So Check out Live Bearded Tom Cruise cosplay at the checkout. Get 10% off your first purchase. What? Don't have a beard? Don't worry because their shampoo actually can, their beard wash actually can work as shampoo. Who knew? I know. I do now. Uh, yeah, I, I'm here for you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no beard for this guy. No, I know. It'd be cool though. Yeah. Haw- Hawkeye with the beard. Just saying. Well, Captain America did it. Right. It's possible. It's possible. Thor did it. Thor. Thor did it. Yeah. Um, Rocket Raccoon. <laughs> <laughs> Trash Panda. Trash Panda. I'm sure there's tons of stuff in his hair. Uh, <laughs> he needs a wash. I am your host, Tom Cruise, military nerd. With me is my fellow brother, Trevor, aka Hawkeye Cosplay. Um, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. We are on YouTube, iTunes, Podbean, Spotify, your mother's backside. Um, <laughs> you like every time you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> Those tramp stamps. I don't want to watch in. that. I'm just telling you. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. We'll be on Pornhub soon. One of these days. 
<laughs> you're like what did i sign up for yeah. <laughs> you've got some catching up to do yeah. previous yeah, episodes like... Ooh. um yeah toodles everybody bye see you next time <laughs>